Welcome there, ladies and gentlemen, to the official Rockfish Games weekly stream. I am your host, uh, Eric Schrader, the community ambassador for Rockfish Games, the creators of Everspace, and soon to be Everspace 2. This is a nice black screen, which I don't like in particular. Where are you at, Game Capture? Let me just check and make sure this is, uh, there it is. There, there it is. Where are you at? Awesome. Perfect. So today we are actually going to be doing two things. The first thing we're going to be doing is diving into Everspace 1, showcasing our first game that's on the books, on the records, talking a bit about it with you fine folks out there. And we will uh, be talking about why you should definitely buy it for freaking, what is it, $5 right now? Oh my gosh. Uh, winter, winter sale. Hey Kyle, how's it going? Uh, winter sale is just, I, it's the, it's the cheapest it's ever been and it's it's mind-boggling how how affordable we're making this but i'm glad we're able to do this so if you haven't picked up this game yet i think now is the absolute best time to do so because even if you don't like it you're only out a little bit of money and i mean there's still refund policies for steam anyway so you should get your money back regardless but the point is is that it's in a very accessible financial position right now so you earn you owe it to yourself to get those extra sweet steam points for the winter sale thing going on giving it a go and also checking out the stream to see all these really hot tips and tricks to help you succeed right out of the gate that pretty awesome i hope so because that's exactly what we're going to be doing also want to give a shout out to everybody over on twitch um we are live also on youtube on mixer and over on steam i'm following all of your chats like a crazy person so if you do ask a question and it doesn't get answered in the next 10 to 30 seconds just be patient. I'm sure I will get there. I'm also confident that we'll have some lovely people who are floating around in chat to help answer questions as well. Mm. This game got you through your deployment in Afghanistan. My goodness. Well, thank you for your service. And thank you for the support of our game. Um, definitely. Uh, that's, that's incredible. Uh, so keep doing what you do. We'll keep doing what we do. You keep us safe and we'll keep being nerdy. <laughs> Excellent. Oh my gosh. But uh welcome Longbottom 99 WT Grindle 27 Nova 4 8100 D Star <laughs> Talon 24. <laughs> I'm sorry Blood Star, I have to. I have to make fun of it. Oh my gosh. Solus 55, you guys are all great. Thank you so much for being over on Twitch. Um anyone who's over there shadowing on YouTube and also everybody on the Steam store page itself. Uh, again, my name is Eric Schrader. I'm the Community Ambassador for Rockfish Games. What does that mean? It means that I am both a part of your voice for the community through the developers, and I'm also on the development team itself. I've actually been helping facilitate the direction of certain elements of Everspace 2 through a lot of conversation, and then the dev teams are the ones who know how to do all the magic and make it happen. Let me tell you what, we got a couple things to talk about today with Everspace 2, but... Like I said, first things to first, we're going to start in Everspace 1. We're going to do a new run, just to jump right out of the gates here um, and show you what this is all about. So for those of you who are have never been familiar with anything Rockfish Games, this is the first you've ever heard of Everspace, um, and you were like, wow, Everspace 2 is in development? That's super cool. Awesome. We're excited that you're excited. So Everspace 1 is an arcade roguelike shooter in space, your spaceship and you're just blowing stuff up, you're trying to make it as far as you possibly can, and the challenge itself is seeing what you're able to do with your skills and your abilities before you're destroyed and have to try again. Now we do have permanent progression in the form of these perks. I, here we have everything unlocked, just ignore this, we're gonna be starting a fresh new run so you see and experience it exactly how it is from the get-go. Um, and so let's let's just start off and do that. Because uh, this is probably going to be really confusing. But basically, there's a lot of stuff to unlock in this game. There's tons, tons to unlock. Uh, for anybody who's ever kind of curious, like, I, you wanted to start over from the very beginning. Maybe you haven't played the game in a while. You wanted to just get, like, a super fresh restart. Because Everspace 2 is coming out, and maybe the story connects? I don't know. I know. So, um, I'm just going to go ahead and click on this reset game. I want to very briefly talk about these details just for anyone out there who's really concerned about losing all their saved data. Reset run 
merely ends the run that you were flying. So when you click on continue, you start back in the hangar. Reset Hardcore Run does that exact same thing, but Hardcore Mode. If you don't know what Hardcore Mode is, don't worry about it. We'll talk about it later. And finally, Reset Game. This is where all of your save data just goes, whoop, it's gone. Eliminated completely. Do not push this button unless you absolutely want to start over from scratch. So I'm going to reset my controls and whatnot real quick because I know some of them uh, have changed. Uh, we want to remove that stuff. This is all fine. Uh, let's see. There was something else. Yeah, we want to change the sound. Yeah, it resets everything, including all of your all of your settings that you had were turned camera shakes off. No vibration. No HUD in the cockpit view. I'm flying through this so that we can get started on this adventure. Are you guys ready? Hey, Caden, I see you joined us. Emperor, Emperor Wargasm, my goodness, what a name. Shuru GL, always a pleasure. Michael RFG, the big bad boss himself, always a pleasure for you swinging in. Oh my gosh. Let's see. All right, let's go. We still need save slots for Everspace. I'd I'd have to delete everything to show a friend for the non-finished save game. Talent 24, there is one thing you can do. It's a little bit of manipulation-y stuff. Maybe you could even call it save scumming, but it is possible to extract your save file <coughs> where the folder it's located at so that you can retain that and then start a new game to show your friend. Then when you're done, you just take your save file, plug it back in, boom, bada, bing. Mm. It's possible. All right, but let's start from the scratch and do this. Talking so much. Let's just, let's dive in. Here we go. New game of Airspace One, story mode. Something's not right with me. I'm having memory loops. There was a dispute. I was standing in the way of their plans. I was restrained. Shot with something. Ooh. Who is this? I managed to escape. That's all I can remember. I must find some answers. Oh my gosh, Solace, this reminds me of my drive to work. What? Your drive at work must suck, man. Every time you drive, somebody injects you with something, and then you're like, oh man, I gotta escape? Oh, where I gotta find some answers? That's a rough ride, man. That is crazy. So we're diving right into the tutorial here, as you can see. Um, the hive requires further training. Activating automatic assistance. Beautiful. He's Stand telling us all the things. Uh, the assistance? I suppose I could use some pointers. So I'm not actually going to show you the tutorial because I am your tutorial for the stream. Let's be clear. All right. So I don't need to do this. I'm going to straight up skip this. Basically what this is showing you are the differences and, uh, of how like you're going to be engaging with the game of Everspace itself. Through this, you have some really basic commands using your mouse. Um, mouse is going to be your yaw. Wherever you point your mouse is where your ship is going to point and go towards. Your left hand sets on WASD like most traditional games. Your W and S are going to be your forward and your backward. Whereas your A and D, hi, would you please stop talking? I am trying to help the poor people understand how to play this game. <sighs> Goodness gravy. All right, that's fine. Perfect. So now we're in the midst of it. Um, whenever you dive right into the game, you're going to have a lot of challenges immediately. That's just the nature of it. All right, now that things are calmed down, Hive, really, come on. Maybe they have something I need. There's a lot of lore in this game. So the Hive and the main protagonist are going to be talking a lot through your encounter to give you a little slice of what is all happening around you. So controls, A and D, move your ship left and right. Very arcade-like features here um, in how you're moving your ship around, okay? This is not a realistic portrayal of space. If you're looking for a space sim, I would encourage you to look for other games. This is very much not a space sim. It doesn't have like crazy drifting going on or anything like that. Instead, we have very precise controls where we can navigate quite specifically around obstacles at our leisure. Once you get a feel for the controls, of course. You have space bar that moves your ship upwards and you have control that moves your ship downwards. Glad we moved down because we would hit that asteroid. Woo! Oh my goodness. So your controls are pretty basic from that standpoint. Then we're diving into our weapons, right? So you fire your weapon with mouse. 
you can hear me clicking it right there. Then the right mouse button actually uses an item called your secondary. This is your missiles in most traditional games that's consumed upon its use. All right, so we're gonna go over here. We're gonna use our pulse laser against this outlaw scout. Dodge some missiles first. We use our pulse laser to take out his shields and then we cycle over to our Gatling gun to just absolutely annihilate what's remaining of his hull. Now we got a we got a lot of bad guys on us, so let me uh, let me go into super crazy focus mode here for a second. These guys were not messing around, but you'll see that there are different enemy types that can combat you. Here we have some pretty basic ones, these outlaw scouts, and then we also have those drones. The drones are little glass cannons. You absolutely don't want them sticking around for too long, because uh, they do a lot of damage, even though they don't consist of a lot of hull. Lots of little details that pop up when the first time you're playing. Don't worry, we'll get to it when the time is right. We're going to take out these missile silos so that we can't get dead. Because nobody wants to get dead this early in a live stream. That would be embarrassing. Next up, let's talk about your devices and your consumables. All of these things are at the top of your screen. So the left item, that's our main weapon that we've been cycling between our pulse laser and our Gatling gun. Pulse laser is good against shields, Gatling gun's good against pull. All right, these are all the basics that you need to know when you are playing this game. Next is your secondaries. Your secondary slots right there. Light missiles, <clears throat> they're light, they're missiles. It's pretty self-explanatory, does a lot more damage to hull, so you wanna drop their shields before you fire that at your foe. The next item up is your device known as the weapon overdrive. This when you activate this, damage considerably. I like the sound of that. I do too. So this is an item that will allow you to dish out more damage in the short duration that it is active. As you can see up there, there's this little number counting down. It says 11S. That means it's got that much time in seconds left until it expires. We do consume energy whenever we use a device. And in order to gain it back, we have to wait for that cooldown now that it's done and then we can freely use it again. Consumable is the very last item on the right side, that shield booster. When we use that item, it is consumed. It's completely gone, but it will give us a short duration of an added effect of something. In the case of a shield booster, it boosts our shields. I hope you're picking up what I'm putting down. We tried to make things as straightforward as possible in the experience. Excellent. So I'm picking up some resources that are in the area, um, just scrounging around. A lot of this game is about trying to capitalize on the areas that you're thrown into. Because it uses a roguelike formula, everything is procedurally generated, okay? And as such, I don't really know what types of points of interest I'm going to be encountering here. Um, I didn't even know that the Okar were gonna jump in so soon, these nasty little Scalawags. Uh, I'm gonna take them out though. And my main goal, my main mission here, is to reach my destination. As you can see on this star map, we're trying to reach this last point, which will move us into a new sector, after new sector, after new sector. Whoo! Man, lots of new sectors, so that we can ultimately get to the end. And in order to make it, we're going to need to collect as much stuff to boost our ability to make it to the end as possible, which is why I'm exploring this large asteroid and extracting these crystals. Now here in this pause screen, we have this large, uh, like this line right here, just right where my fingers point across, boom, right? All these things, those are your resources. And each of these resources uh, is can be found from unique locations and whatnot. So like that crystal we harvested right here, this is ideally found from those large asteroid interiors that we were flying in between. And crystal is also very frequently used for weapon upgrades. You'll find little tweaks and little features for each one of the resources like that. So you always wanna keep your eyes peeled and collect as much stuff as possible before you warp out. Cause at any point in time, we can point to this green thing, charges up and we'd warp to the next location. I'm not done here yet. I still see some mineable ore that could come in handy later. Whew! My goodness! Alright, so I'm just gonna use a light missile to speed this along. We're gonna gather this ore, and now we're gonna look around very briefly because this game is gorgeous. Come on. If you don't think this game looks good, I don't know who you are, but you are a lion fool. Um, but we can look around here from the cockpit. You can see that we took a bit of damage. We got some some cracks and scratches along the, uh, the wall. We got some flickering lights on our HUD. That's that, We're probably gonna need to buff those out. But uh, we're just gonna look around, see if there's anything else to see. I'm a big fan of third person, by the way. But by all means, choose the way you wanna play. 
I'm not going to tell you how to play. It's your choice. I think we got everything. <clears throat> so the next thing that I want to talk about, we kind of touched on it a little bit. Um, well, actually, let's talk about Okar Forces Unbound. It's a roguelike. You need to constantly be moving forward. When you stop moving forward, the Okar show up and say, Hey, you need to move forward. Because they will come annihilate you if you don't. As you can see, there's a bunch of new energy signatures there of our Okar friends coming to wipe us out. So now we are going to leave. Don't worry, I know a few maneuvers. Boom. Okay, so the big thing that we do need to talk about uh, next is really our energy management. This is probably the hardest system to wrap your brain around when you first start the game, okay? Jump gates are the primary method of travel between systems. Thanks, Hive. These were built by Grady and Brunt prospects for their mining drones to reach areas more... There's a lot of lore in the game, okay? I'm talking a lot. Do you want me to use this? Okay, thanks for the introduction. Now you want me to use this? It is the only way to the next sector. So, yes. Excellent. Thanks, Hive. Perfect. All right. So, um, so energy. If you look at the very middle of that screen where our mouse cursor is, we're moving it around super crazy much. Underneath, you see this yellow <coughs> bar, okay? Maybe you want to say that it looks a little bit more green in comparison to, like, these yellow markers. Sure, whatever. You call it whatever. I'm going to call it tennis ball green, okay? Tennis ball green underneath, that is your indicator of your energy. The more you fire your weapon, you'll see the less energy you have because weapons consume your energy. Pretty basic, pretty straightforward. When you are not firing your weapon, you will see that your energy comes back. Okay? Are we on the same page thus far? Because I really hope we are. The next thing is boosting your ship. Boosting your ship also, as you can see by our tennis ball green color, it is consuming our energy. <coughs> and when we're not boosting, much like you saw earlier, our energy will start coming back. <coughs> so there's a very fine balance of managing your energy when you're firing your weapons <coughs> and when you're boosting your engines. You boost too much, you don't have any weapons to shoot. You shoot too much, you don't have any boost to evade. Good? Any questions? Are we good? Don't scratch the paint, Solus. I love you. Perfect. Tell us a little bit about the technical component of Everspace 2. What version of Unreal Engine 4 is used? Will there be technology type RTX? So we will get to Everspace 2 at the halfway point of the stream. I love how excited you are about it, though. And I can say that we are using Unreal Engine 4.2 something something uh, as of right now. That might even change. It's a constant... You know, development is a constant beast that we are moving in different directions with. But I know that we are using a lot of really cool technology to bring some, uh, like, like possibly ray tracing, for example, um, is definitely coming. Um, and like uh, other, oh my gosh, I'm trying to remember the names of all the things. I'm thinking so much about Everspace One right now. You threw me off my game. <laughs> but I appreciate the question. Basically, lots of cool stuff coming to Everspace 2. But <clears throat> we'll talk about that in a little bit. So with Everspace 1, because of the procedurally generated locations, points of interest like this hunk of junk floating out in space are ideal for you to explore and extract as much as possible. So we're going to go ahead and fly into this uh, very dangerous territory. Destroy these mines, and we're going to... Gain some items. So this is a really good time to talk about some of the equipment that you'll be finding out floating in space. You always have what's equipped on your ship and it's always a low number of slots because you have to really think about what you're going to use and when you're going to use it and you always get to see what's in space. Now if you're not keen on taking what's in space, you can leave it behind or you can salvage it to gain some resources that you can use for upgrading or crafting something completely new later. Ouch, we were a little too close to that mine. You are acquiring a taste for cast offs by the looks of things. Lots of explosions, more credits, beautiful credits are kind of an interesting um, mechanic in Everspace because it is what's used to upgrade your ship between runs. You can't really use credits other than the occasional trader and service station. 
But um, credits, you will be spending those on those perks that we talked about and we showed at the very, very, very beginning of the stream, where every successive run is going to get a little bit more opportunities based on how What's you spend those credits. Brady and Brunt prospects. A lot of lore. The corporate and sole legitimate operator in the demilitarized zone. Their monopoly has ensured unchecked expansion. You will encounter their jump gates and mining drones frequently. All right, so uh, Grady and Brunt Prospects, a really big mining corporation. They're basically a monopoly. I'm sure they've got plenty of money to spare, so we're just going to borrow a couple tools to complete our mission. They're on to me. And now we're going to go because they're really upset with us. Excellent. So we're going to go use this jump gate, which thankfully they can't lock off from us because we are using a hive that is connected to the Aeterna systems and they can't stop us even though it's a gradient brought tool. More story! Strange. Fragments of memories. Trying to make sense of them. I had managed to escape. I was weak and ill. My cells were deteriorating. A deadly poison. A cytotoxin. A slow, relentless, eating me away. There was a way to halt its progress, but it would take time. All I could do was set the wheels in motion. And await the outcome in stasis. A long... Uncertain sleep. I don't know about you guys, but I've been kind of sick in the last couple of days, so all of this, like, I don't know. Whew. Ugh. <laughs> I saw myself again. Dying. This must be a memory from the world. Apparently, a flaw in the transparency. The internal system was meant to be Wait, what are you saying? My original. I'm a. A club. Yes. Usually, this is not realized by limited use copies. Perfect. The function of Eterna was to pass on operational skills, such as piloting. But it seems that something has gone wrong here. Stop. This is a lot to take on board all at once. Are you listening? Are you reading? Why is this happening? Who am I? Who is my original? I have no information on that. Perhaps there is a purpose to this aberration which will become clear upon reaching the coordinates given. I have no answers, unfortunately. But I am as curious as you are. So there's a lot going on right now, and I'm showing you a little sliver of the full story of Everspace here. We're not going to cover the entire breadth of Everspace 1 in this particular stream, but know that you should definitely be listening um, as you're being absolutely destroyed and punished in this experience for not picking up on all the tips and tricks that I'm giving you during the stream. You absolutely have a lot to digest and what's going on to this main character and why you are here and, and how everything's interconnected. And of course, you know, I say all this and if you really just want to like blow stuff up in space, I mean, it's an arcade shooter. That's kind of what the point is. So, you know, we're going to go ahead and take out this elite. They're apparently harder than normals. And we get an access key. Access keys have a 70% chance to drop from elites. And they are used to get into uh, more extravagant locations that can offer greater rewards. So it's really nice that we were able to pick that up. Maybe we'll even showcase grabbing a subroutine during the course of this run and talk a little bit about that. <laughs> oh my gosh, Solus. Are you one of the people who made this game, says Her, uh, Hergot Margot? I am probably pronouncing your name so incorrectly, and I do apologize, but I am the community ambassador for Rockfish Games. My name is Eric Schrader, your humble servant, showing you Everspace One right now as it is on sale for the winter Steam sale. And I am giving a lot of tips and tricks through the course of this. I am on the development team. I am specifically helping out with development of Everspace 2. But I did do a lot of QA work 
for Everspace One. So if you have any questions at all pertaining to the game state about the company Rockfish Games, anything like that, I am employed. I do work for the team. So um, by all means, dive in, ask your questions. Let's have a conversation. Otherwise, we're gonna keep talking about how that missile completely missed. Oh my goodness. There we go. Much more satisfying conclusion there. So, we are going to continue moving through each one of these sectors, picking up stuffs. Um, always look for these big points of interest. That is going to be your saving grace. The more resources you have means the more options you will have down the line. Especially when more things are getting broken on your ship. Um, we have various parts of your ship that will be taking damage if you are not taking care of yourself. Your engines could get busted, your sensors could get completely taken out, your life support system could be dwindling, and your only means of repairing them are the resources that you collect through your run. If you don't have resources, you gonna get got. That's just how it gonna be. So absolutely make sure that you are picking up everything. How would I describe the culture at Everspace? So the the so at Rockfish Games, oh my gosh. Well, um, Rockfish Games is a German company based out of Hamburg, Germany. And my goodness, we do everything by the books. Very, very straightforward with our approaches. Um, but also, like, I would say that the team, we do a really good job. I this kind of sounds like two on a horn, and I guess it kind of is, but you asked. We do a really good job of listening to feedback. Um, we are very open and um, definitely receive criticism in all regards. Um, I mean, obviously there are certain things where it's like our vision and our expectations are different from yours, and so there's gonna be conflict zone there. But I think that Everspace One really came through, especially through development, um, through the Kickstarter itself, and how we made a lot of systems get modified and tweaked and changed because of the community's voice. And Everspace One is truly the game that it is today, not so much because of us, but because of the community that surrounds us. And um, very, very hard workers, like we're very, like we're in the, when we are in the, the studio, it's very much like pounding out work. And when we're out of the studio, it's very much like we are, we are really strong players as well. Like we know how to play strong. We know how to work strong. That's really the mentality at Rockfish Games. So there you go. I'm sure that Michael, Michael, the CEO himself would be uh, delighted to share a little bit more about the culture of Rockfish Games since, you know, he established it. Um, <laughs> So um, I know that the individuals that he has hired, like everybody who works at Rockfish Games, like there's a certain mentality that you have to have in order to be um, and, and to really thrive in this environment. Um, so yeah, there you go. Hopefully that's thorough enough. And Michael, you know, if you don't, if you, if you can't answer that, I totally understand because he's being a total boss right now, responding to a lot of questions What's and whatnot on? over on it's Twitch. But, um, yeah, it's good. It's a lot of fun. I really enjoy it. Excellent. So now we are in our first space hazard here. These are also going to be dotted along your transportation through the demilitarized zone. This is a nebula. Pretty standard, but it looks like space clouds. It's our own little rendition. And it's hiding things hiding things all around us and the only way that you're going to be able to see that is by actually navigating through those clouds and exploring those locations and the reason for this is because our sensors are impaired while we're here that's that's honestly why like we we can't see anything otherwise so we're going to go ahead and repair ourselves by flying through this repair hole which was really conveniently placed for us and we're going to look at this tuning station which might have a really nice upgrade for us to take um, increases your ship's armor by 5%. You know what? What the heck? Why not? This could help save our skin later. These are not permanent upgrades. These are all temporal upgrades that you can get as you find them through the run. And this is also a DLC exclusive addition to the game. The DLC adds a ridiculous amount of content, including but not limited to a new player ship, new ship skins that you can apply to any of your ships, new enemy types, new locations that you can explore, new stations like the one that we're here with new complete upgrades. We have five entirely new DLC characters, 
groups with story arcs that span out for each one of them. So they have like entire mission chains that you can complete with unique uh, rewards when you complete each one of those. Uh, what else did I miss? Oh yeah, of course, there's tons of new weapons. There's tons of new secondaries. There's tons of new consumables. There's tons of new devices. All of this stuff is freaking jam-packed into the DLC, which is $4 right now. $4 for the DLC. It adds so much content. It's kind of absurd. If you have not purchased the DLC and you own Everspace, right now is the time to buy it because it's the cheapest it's ever been and it, it will transform your gaming experience of Everspace. I'm not even joking. It is so much content. Oh my gosh. Also, Michael did respond to the culture of Rockfish in a very simple but very concise uh, message. He said, it's like a family. We've been growing up together for over 15 years with highs and lows, people joining and leaving. And I do want to explain something very briefly. Rockfish Games was a previous company prior to becoming Rockfish. So in talking about 15 years of camaraderie, he's talking about individuals that he still worked alongside, blood, sweat, and tears to make things happen. And through that process, even leaving that previous company, reforming Rockfish Games, still being together through it all, it is a very strong and powerful family indeed. All right, thank you for sharing that, Michael. It's awesome. So we're gonna go ahead and take this armor plating and we got ship upgrade and we're gonna keep moving. Um, yeah, we're gonna keep moving. Now, normally, in a very in a very standardized approach to Everspace 1, I would say you don't want to do what I just did. You want to explore and extract as much stuff as humanly possible. I'm gonna kind of speed things along so you can see a little bit later game sectors and situations. So that you know that it's not just the exact same thing with a little bit of a different pretty background every time. We're also going to use some of our new tools like the Static Discharger where we don't even have to fire our weapon. But our electricity from it will shock and destroy nearby foes just by staying close to them. Really powerful close ranged tool but also kind of hard to use because as I just mentioned you have to be close range. More crystals, more tech containers. Ooh, ouch, we were way too close to that mine. Maybe we should look around a little bit. Oh, I think that's all of them. All right. Man, our ship is not, not looking so good. Who's gonna get out there and, and buff out those scratches? Bloodstar, can you do that for me? <laughs> My goodness. That is uh, not looking too hot. All right, so now that we've taken care of this, we're gonna fly over to this lightning in space and show you a subroutine out of the Colonial Derelict Station over here. Uh, lightning in space? How? Magnetic fields causing friction and anomaly. Oh, here we go. Quite visually striking. So we can see that there's a couple different factions in the game of Everspace as well. We have these outlaws, which are shooting at the GMB forces. You've met them both already. But it's good to know that the GMB don't give an inch for outlaw factions. Doesn't matter what type of outlaw they are, be them good, bad, or neutral, GMB will punish them. <clears throat> Next, we uh, we also saw the Okar. The Okar have a different relationship with the GMB as well. So it's not just everybody's against everyone else. Um, you will see that there are some subtle negotiations and treaties in place because of the treaties left over from the Okar colonial conflict. I've said it once, I've, I'll say it again a million times. This is a lore heavy game. There's a lot of good stuff in here, especially if you're a lore junkie like myself. Um, a lot of information to grab about the different factions and why they're here um, and what's going on even with the main story. Now, is this, no, we don't have, we don't have a subroutine in there. So we want to look somewhere else. Probably over here. So this access key we're going to use in order to open up a door. Going to gain some more ore before we go to the door. Oh, another turret. No. Um, let's see. Where are we going? Is it in there? Aha! It's right there. You can see it through the crack in the wall. So we're going to fly up to this. We're going to transmit this access key over to this door. We're just going to pop open. And we're going to scan this little QB thing. 
We have received a regeneration bonus subroutine. What does that mean? I'm glad that you asked. Oh my goodness. So whenever we obtain a new enhancement, it logs it into our enhancement tab under our data. This is going to give us 5% faster energy regeneration whenever we apply it, but we cannot apply it unless we're in the hangar. What that means is that we have a large selection of subroutines and glyphs that you will be choosing up to three on your current run, and it can, in some cases, modify the run itself. This one, unfortunately, is not a good example of that. This is just a nice little bonus that is essentially going to make the energy on your ship regenerate just a little bit faster. So it doesn't have any caveats to its use, it's just a bonus. But other tools, like example, the Daredevil subroutine, that will make all of your damage output 25% more damage, as well as remove the energy cost entirely. But you're not allowed to use shields. Your shields are unusable in the entire run. And you can't take that subroutine off. So when you apply it, you are bound to it until you die and start over again. All right. Let's get what's in here. We're going to take that. Ooh, tractor beam would be really convenient, but we're not going to take it. Uh, plasma torpedoes, I'm going to take my light missiles instead. There's a lot of different items that you're going to have to think on the fly of if you want to keep, if you want to get rid of, much as you're seeing me do. I've played this game a couple times, which is why I'm doing it like that. But there's a lot of options. A lot of different ways you can go about a situation. For example, here... We are going to use the remote energy discharger on top of that GMB ship. So we didn't damage the GMB ship, but we hit the outlaws surrounding him. A great little tool for crowd control, especially when you have a bunch of grouped up enemies. Keep it up. Perfect. GMB came out without a scratch. Feels good. That's a missile silo. A very dangerous... Um, missile that you don't want to be hit by so we're just going to take that out so we never have to deal with it again Whoo, that was close all right let's extract some of the goods from this outpost ouch taking some hits from mines but that'll do i'm decently happy with what we've been collecting so let's keep going Oh, I missed another message from Michael. He says, What unites us is the passion for excellence in creating top-notch space shooters with best-in-class gameplay, graphics, sound, and storytelling. Sounds like a lot of marketing BS, but we totally mean it. And I guess it would be bad if I said that Michael, as our CEO, is also our chief marketing officer there. But, um, but he's absolutely right. Like, I've met the team. I have worked alongside the team, and I mostly work with the team online, but it's true in every single one of those senses. In fact, with Everspace 2, um, we're, we've been so passionate about the story that we've actually been butting heads in the office about what even makes a good story and how we can make it even better. So know that it's not some, some sort of like, just sort of way to make a sound good. It's like, we have internal conflicts all the time because we are so passionate about making this the absolute best it can possibly be. It's the best type of conflict that we can have, really. It truly is. We're very, very fortunate to have the team that we have who cares so much. Oh my gosh. It's good stuff. It's really good stuff. Alright, so there's not too much more in this area. We are out of fuel, but we are able to use the jump gate. So we're going to use this jump gate, and then from there, I think we're going to start transitioning over to Everspace 2 stuff. Ooh. Ooh, that'll be nice, because this is the last little story snippet that I really want to show you. The last little story snippet here. So we're going to make a little bit of progress here in Sector 3, and then we will transition. My memories are not my own. They are copies. They originate from someone else. It was at the Fleet Academy. His name was Adam. Adam Roslin. Quiet, reserved, awkward around the others. He had a friend, Seth. They shared a dorm. Basic training was tough. Oh. Seth looked out for Adam. He stood up for him. The brains and the brawn. They became close like a team. And then the orders came. 
Deployment for war against the Okar. Savagery. All this story, all of this rich story, and some people just look at it and say, oh, it's a roguelike. The story doesn't matter, it's just gameplay only. I mean, I'm a roguelike enthusiast, okay? I played a lot of roguelikes in my day, and I know that in most cases, the story doesn't technically matter, all right? You're not wrong. You're not wrong in that. But if you do pay attention to what's going on here, there's some pretty remarkable things that all get interconnected and share a pretty deep story that can also make you ask a lot of questions about your personal identity. I know, we're going, we're going philosophical here, even. It is kind of ridiculously crazy, but that's the direction that we took this story arc. And you're going to see a lot more of that explained and carried over when we dive into Everspace 2's full story reveal, which is a long time from now, because we're not going to spoil anything, of course, before the game's released in 2021. So, That battle near a minefield. Yikes. Don't want to accidentally pop myself. But now this entire area is actually a space hazard in this electricity storm thing. In space? Does it make sense from a realistic perspective? Probably not. Is it awesome in a video game? Hell yeah. That's why we added it. We wanted things to be fun, inviting, and a challenge. So the main thing to note about this electricity in space is that it doesn't actually damage your ship ever. It doesn't touch your hull, but it will drain your shields. So you need to be careful about when to engage your foes, because you might have your shields completely gone, and then you're going to take a lot of damage and probably die. The other thing to note about this nice little energy area is that it regenerates your energy every time you get hit. So if you're evasive enough and don't care about your shields because you're an amazing scout pilot, looking at you folks, then you can actually just fly around your opponents with ease, blasting away with never having to worry about your weapon energy at all. So one other thing to point out is that this is a black hole. Black holes in this game are not something that you really want to mess with unless you have the energy power, which I don't right now, so we're flying away from it. It does not transport you to a magical place on the other side of the galaxy. It's death. That's what you get. It is actually death. Finally, let's talk about one other little component before we transition over to Everspace 2. Fuel management. This is the second most uh, important thing that I see newcomers struggle with behind energy management. Fuel management essentially means that in the upper right corner of the screen, right above me, right all the way up there, that is how much fuel you have left before you can jump. You have to have 25 fuel. 25 fuel as indicated by that circle you see it says 13 and it doesn't have the full uh, quarter filled The full thing is a hundred points There's a tick at all 25 points which represents the ability to jump once when it's not full you cannot jump well You can But you could shred your ship to pieces So what you want to do is you want to find fuel where is fuel found? This is a very 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 important question to answer Fuel is found from ransacking various locations to like this freighter wreck here, to destroying opposing ships, to finding an actual fuel station, buying fuel or procuring it. Those are your means of obtaining fuel. And it's much more readily available than you might think. Fuel is not a rare resource at all. In fact, it's probably likely that we'll either see it come out of this. Look, right there, we got some fuel. <clears throat> and I was going to fight those GMB fighters, but they went into a black hole. Um, so let's go see if we can find some before we jump. Because I'm sure that this point of interest has some nice, sweet stuff without a trap in mind. Oh boy. Now, pretty confident that turrets don't drop fuel. 
they're just going to drop a lot of like handmade craftables like scrap and um, uh, components. Oh, we're out of shields. Yeah, we don't want to be here. So I think what we're going to do is we're just going to punch it. We're going to try and get out of here and hope that our ship doesn't get torn to shreds. And you always will have something that pops up that says, hey, are you sure you want to do this? We never make it to where you don't understand what's about to happen in the game, except for one particular case, in which case I giggle every time because it involves a black hole that's being made. Surprise. But anyway, <clears throat> for fuel, when you don't have enough, you can't safely reach the next orbit. Do you want to risk damaging your ship and try to jump anyway? Yes! Wow, we got a lucky jump. We didn't tear our ship to shreds. That's fantastic. Yay us. RNG is on our side. That That's not very likely to see, uh, especially the very first time you try it. I'm gonna just, hey, Michael Bodie. Procuring is Everspace lingo for theft. You caught me. You caught me red, you, you, you caught me rockfish red-handed. Oh my gosh. At least the hive doesn't say this sucks as you get pulled into a black hole. I love this community. Let's jump to the next location <clears throat> and get a little bit more story. There is a colonial heavy fighter leaving hyperspace in front of us. Be aware. Okay, thanks for the warning. He has a jump suppressor. This does not bode well. Who would have thought that outlaws make such good informers? But they were right. You're still alive. It's that guy. I'm not sure we've been introduced. What you did was unnecessary. Destroying it all. How could you? After all the efforts we put into our plans, you betrayed me. Listen, I think you have the wrong man. I don't want any trouble. I don't play the fool. I hate to do this, but I can't let you get away with this, Adam. Adam? Wait. Uh, I've seen you before. You... Your name is Seth. What do you take me for? You can drop the amnesia act. It's time for you to pay. All right. Multiple hostiles incoming. Multiple? Oh, boy, that's a problem. We're just gonna easy mode this. Damn you, Adam. This is Pro tips. If you have 20 light missiles, you can beat Seth Nobu without so much as a scratch. I remember him vaguely. Uh, take out his shields first, though. Because, again, if you try and launch those out of shields, it's just going to block him. It should not come as a surprise that most people want to kill him. Only that this one was rather talkative. Talkative? He accused me of something I did and I can't remember. What have I done? Who am I? Who am I indeed? And these are questions that you are going to continue to find and answer through the course of Everspace 1, just keep in mind that you need to be flying all over the place and looking at all of these very specific um, points of interest like this. As you can see, flying over to this kind of like broken debris field, you see all those little colorful Christmas lights out there? Merry Christmas. Those are sweet, delicious loot goodies. And you want to collect so much of that as you're navigating through this game. Some of you are wondering like, whoa, wait a second, how did you do this like thing where he's looking around everything? This is a full photo mode. Uh, we actually really enjoy this feature a lot. Um, we've had some absolutely remarkable photos being taken uh, from our community. If you want to be a part of that, you can actually get involved and show us your beautiful screenshots by joining discord.gg slash rockfishgames and posting it in the gallery channel. There is some seriously gorgeous stuff in there. Like it is, it is insane. And now we're also seeing the population of screenshots from Everspace 2 uh, through the prototype that was recently distributed this week. I think this is a perfect time to start talking about and transitioning into Everspace 2. So give me one second as we jump over. Mm. Oh my goodness. But thank you everybody who's joined thus far in watching Everspace 1 and a couple of tips and tricks that should help you the first time you dive into this experience because there's probably a lot of you picking up this game for freaking dirt cheap. Hopefully you're also getting the DLC to get all of that extra sweet, delicious goodness in the game. Obviously, leave those reviews as well. It's very appreciated, and it does a lot more good than you think. Even if it is a negative review, if you don't like it, at least be thorough and explain why, and maybe we can take that feedback 
and push it into our next game, Everspace 2. Everspace 2, you say? What is that? I'm completely interested all of a sudden. Let's talk about that. Give me one second to set things up, and we will dive right in after this very short break. See you in one moment. You caught me so red-handed, Bloodstar. back in a new game and one that you have not seen yet because this is not the prototype build I'm actually showing you the very live build of the full game of Everspace 2 and the reason I'm doing this is I want to show you a couple of new elements that we have been working on thus far um, now you will have to excuse me a little bit because I'm going to be reciting notes that I got directly from the development team to ensure that I'm not messing up any of these details. So um, thank you for your patience and how I'm pulling up all of this information and relaying it to you. But there's a lot and I want you to get all of it. All right. It's important. It's important to me and I know it's also important to you. So um, let's fly in here and show you a little bit about what's going on. So, um, I have to be really careful about which button I, I choose here. Excellent. All right, so we're going to the storage. <laughs> we're going to the storage within the home base here in the CEDO system. Um, all of you are pretty familiar with the home base, but you're gonna see a lot of additional features here uh, that have never been showcased before at all in the slightest. Um, and the first thing is, is that we have new itemization um, uh, uh, sorting that's the word I'm looking for sorting so that you are able to get everything exactly where you need it to be on the fly in the capacity that you want it to be so here you can see we've also been adjusting the UI of these items uh, even further um, so we've already been soaking in just a little bit of that feedback that we've already been hearing talking about through the prototype even though the prototype is not necessarily a build we're looking for feedback you know, you still make some really good suggestions and uh, we're happy to be pushing some of those concepts uh, into the game itself. So um, we've redesigned the item info widget completely. So it supports new features like um, repairing and dismantling as well as destroying. So you can see down at the bottom where it says store and change and now it also says destroy. This is also going to be something where you're going to be able to scrap items for resources. This should sound incredibly familiar because this is something that you absolutely do from Everspace 1. So elements like that have been added. The next thing is you'll have these little yellow markers. You see that indicates that it's a new item that's been dropped. So here we have a superior sensor, for example, and you can see in the comparison that there's a sensor item all, all like already up there as well. Actually, I'm going to do this with the weapons because it's going to make more sense. So, for example, if we hover over this thermo gun, 
thermogun. Yes, you guys haven't seen this in the prototype yet, but if we hover over this thermogun, and uh, you can actually see really at the top, it's like super at the top of the screen, there's a, a pulse laser icon. When we hit the alt button to compare stats, you see the change of the weapon itself. Little transition there as well, so you know exactly which weapon you're looking at, as well as seeing those little bitty squares. See where the, the title says thermogun? Underneath it, it says thermogun again. That's because the top title is the name of the weapon and below is the type of weapon. So the thermogun could be named something. But right underneath that, there's these two little squares that pop up to show you what slot of weapon is being changed. Some of these things that I'm sure some of you have already seen, but these are little details that we're being very particular about so you know exactly what you're looking at and exactly what you're comparing your systems with. Go ahead and put this cargo unit on. Dismantling yield, dismantling quality. See that? Those are some great features. You have some of that on and you're gonna be getting more rich resources back whenever you dismantle your gear. All right, let's keep moving through these elements. Um, let's see, we can also sort the items. I think it's the alt button. No, it's not the all button. But basically, when you when you have the different uh, items listed here, you can click on your latest, your value. You see them swapping around. See the item types being listed. So like all our sensors are together, all the weapons are together. The rarities, obviously, it's putting all the pinks first because those beautiful superior items are going to show up first. And then also the amount. Uh, we have like basically one of each one of these things, so the amount doesn't change. But you can customize and organize this to your liking. I'm partially, I, I'm, I'm a partially a big fan of the value button so that I know what's gonna be the hottest item to sell and trade. We're just gonna, we're gonna equip some of this stuff. Oh, we have a prime zapper, oh man. Be careful about showing some of these things, but there's a lot coming, okay? There's a, there's a lot coming, there's a lot in the works. And this just gives you a really good sense of how we are making it more accessible to you to go through and find what tools that you want to change these out with. Um, in fact, here, what we see here, this is a way to see what ships you have, like what all of your ships have on them and how you can cycle them out right here. This is the global button. So all of your ships on the hangar, this is what all of your ships would have. And you can cycle this in and out between all of your inventories or what is equipped while you're in the home base. So you don't have to like change to another ship, unequip it, put it in your inventory, put it into your mass inventory, go to your other ship, take it out of your mass inventory, put it onto your other ship, equip it. You don't have to do that nonsense. Here you just see straight up the comparison of what's on your other ships, straight up. If you don't want to look in that sense, you can also just make it towards your one ship and the inventory that you have to see what your other options are as well. So you don't accidentally take something off of another one of your ships. So again, a global status where you can see all of your other ships and what's equipped to those versus everything that's on one specific ship and what you could interchange there. So we're gonna choose this plating. Obviously we have better plating now, <laughs> some nice little tools, little features and whatnot. Oh, it's a much better shield. We're just popping on some extra stuff. Unfortunately, I can't show you much else beyond these details, but there are still a couple more things I wanna make sure that I, um, I'm i able to give you guys. But I really love the all everywhere feature. I hope that that's gonna save you guys a lot of trouble when, you're, when you do have multiple ships with multiple items on all of them. And you're like, oh my gosh, where was that one shield that I had instead of having to flip through it? You just go to the all, have the shield selected. You just basically do this done you see which ship it's on you pull it off you put it on this ship or you move it around to your liking boom 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 let's get on and blow stuff up right we're really thinking about all of these quality of life elements because if the game's not accessible then it doesn't really matter right that's something we learned with everspace one it's why we do a lot of these live streams and why it's why the dlc has like really captured the essence of everspace one in a capacity to like help ease you in and give you new opportunities here we're taking that formula except we're going just absolutely crazy with it so that you know how you can use your tools where they're at and get them where you need them to be all right cool um let's see you would also be able to choose other ships specifically from that. Had we another ship in the hangar, we only have this Sentinel in the hangar bay right now. 
But if there was another ship, like this is the Sentinel, there'd be another option in the middle between there, like for Interceptor, or Gunship, or Scout. Because you guys know those ships are coming. But that the global one is where it's everything. All right. Um, let's see. I want to make sure I've got all this covered. You guys have any questions about these quality of life features before the game is even... <laughs> <laughs> even remotely out like this we're not even to alpha uh, alpha steps yet we're already talking quality of life what are your thoughts i want to i want to hear you guys voicing it up while i uh push some buttons here and look and make sure i'm getting you all the details So there's a lot of other little um, details that have been included, um, like simply placing uh, objects uh, like so. You can see the graphic there. Um, you can see swapping graphic there. See the difference there? Like this one's just moving it to another slot, whereas this one's swapping it with that item. Then we also see um, where we're dropping this on. This one's also gonna like swap it out <clears throat> How do I take my shields off? That's silly. Um, there's also an add combine feature whenever you have, like, say, stackables. Like, if we had two of these uh, glacets, we'd be able to have that little UI feature that shows you that it's adding on with a little plus sign. Um, error not allowed stuff. So, like, I think this is... No, no, it's a swap. Um... So that's not implemented yet, maybe? I'm not sure. But that one might still be in the works. But you can see, like, we're already thinking about just making your inventory so much more manageable because we know it's important. I mean, it's a loot-heavy game. We want to do that. I don't know if Theus is in the chat at all, but if there was any other detail that you have, if you're watching, that I have left unanswered by all means dive in and give the explanation i know that um tilo also helped out a little bit with this um and if you if if they're not in the chat it's totally fine next week we are going to be talking even more about the ui of or excuse me not next week in two weeks and three because obviously next week we have christmas and there's probably not going to be a stream next friday probably not but the next available stream, we're going to be talking even more about UI, including the UI of everything out in space that you see. Because all of this is going to be very, very new and different and exciting to you. I guarantee it. So, I'm um, just checking some last little things. Yeah, I think that mostly covers what we've got going on. Um, so that'll be good. All right, what questions did you guys ask? Is the legendary info window still way too big? Lawn bottom 99 WT probably it probably is. We're working to make sure that we simplify items and um, like obviously you see here that we've we've like cut down on some information. It's not that it's been removed from the game. It's that we're reorganizing how it's being displayed to your beautiful little eyes, right? And through that, like we want to make sure stuff's not getting cut off. You can actually see by me hovering over this blaster, it jumps to the top or the bottom of the screen so that it isn't cut off little quality features like that. So instead of it just being cut off down below, you can now see the whole the whole thing, right? Um, let's see. But yeah, I mean, we're still gonna be having a lot of fun. I don't think any of these, okay, that one is called Maverick. It's called a Maverick Prime Zapper, which is a coil gun. So you can see that we still have like, we're still being very intentional about creating uh, memorable experiences from the loot that you gain. So it's not just, oh, you found coil gun. Oh, you found coil gun blue. You found coil gun pink. You found coil gun orange. Oh, no, like this is a Maverick Prime Zapper. Yeah, it's a coil gun, but it's the Maverick Prime Zapper, right? And it's yours, right? So features like that, just just to add that, that playful sort of uh, uh, storytelling component to your open world RPG experience that is Everspace 2. It's important to us, we're sure it's important to you. 
Quality of life is pretty safe thing to share this early in development. It's great to get little updates on the UI. Hey, I am so happy that you're happy about this, Caden. We really want to be as transparent as possible through this development. Obviously, we don't want to spoil anything, but I feel like this is a really strong talking point to show you, like, these are the things that we are thinking about right now. Like, this is the groundwork we are establishing before we move into the next steps. Because if this isn't established, like if this isn't what we're building on top of, and we have to return to all of this stuff, oh man, everything's gonna topple over, right? That's why it is integral for us to talk about this with you guys, so you can see what's going on to give us your feedback and your suggestions and your concerns, so that we can get it taken care of, get it squared away, and get it firmly, like firmly planted, so that we can build on top and move forward. It's an item heavy game. So items are so important in the information that we are delivering. YouTube guys, I know that you, I've seen some questions over there. I will get to you in just one second. I'm gonna answer one more thing over on Twitch. Um, so it says, oh, that's not actually a question. Never mind. Okay, so YouTube, will high yield snowball launchers be available for our ongoing war against Santa's unending minion, minions? Uh, so Daniel Ashard, um, so I think that's a really playful, fun question. I know that there has already been internal talk about special um, aesthetic looks to your legendary weapons. So for example, if you had a pulse laser, that's a legendary. Instead of it just going pew, 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 I'm a legendary and not really show that, you would instead have like some whiz whimsical effect surrounding it. Maybe it's like, have some sort of like ice, like void effect on it. And it looks like a snowball that it's firing. That's definitely something that is possible that we could implement in the future. So you'll have different looking weapons based on what they are and where you found them for sure. And so you might have been a little bit playful in that response, but um, it's, it's definitely possible. So colors show the value strength of the items. Yes, that is correct. What about items like triangular or wiring kit? Will they do more than provide credits while selling? So we are looking at a different, a lot of different ways that we can utilize the, um, the resources that you're finding, as well as the commodities that you find. Commodities, for example, are mostly going to be tools that you use for trading, yes, but they're, the amount that you trade them for is going to be dependent on which faction and where um, you're making those trades. Because in certain systems, they might have tons of Apollox energy drinks. <laughs> Excellent. And so th they will just buy them for you like five credits a piece, but then you might be in a system where everybody is so tired and they're depressed about their lives and they just can't go on anymore and they just really need a big pick-me-up that's filled with flavor and five essential vitamins and minerals and boom, you've got this Apollox energy drink. They will gonna buy it for a thousand credits. That is how we are building the way that these commodities are gonna work. There will also very likely be ways that we can utilize certain commodities as well as resources in order to craft or at least to exchange for upgrades to build your personalized equipment up. Because we also know that in a loot heavy game, when you're stuck with an item that you can't do anything with until you find something better can sometimes be a drag. So we know that being able to take something that you found, even something that you really like, but maybe has been outdated by a higher level, we want you to be able to do something with that so that it can still be viable or at least meaningful to you in some capacity. So I can't speak too much more on those particular components because it's, first off, it's not ready yet. Um, but secondly, because like it's still a work in progress, right? Um, so if that's something you're really passionate about, I do implore you to dive into our Discord or also our forums. Um, <coughs> excuse me to get involved in that conversation now like earlier the better it's always good to like hear what your guys thoughts and opinions are on how management of systems are like this and creation tools and all of that stuff in between it's wonderful so great question great question from youtube michael says did you mention context sensitive tool tips i personally think this is also a big plus especially when using a gamepad um i don't know if i did uh michael can you walk me through on how to show that <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh goodness. Do I need to have a controller plugged in? Is that... <laughs> oh my goodness. <clears throat> Do we get flamethrowers? Off topic. 
but do spill anyway. Maybe is the solid answer I can give you. Like, I can 100% guarantee that it is possible. <laughs> Alright, let's see what happens if I blow up my controller by, or blow up my computer by plugging in a controller. Okay, good. Good. Everything's terrible. Okay, so I do... Okay, so something else that is really nice to know about how um, the controller support works is this middle space that's just kind of empty. This is where all of your information now pops up. So we did already think about the controller support um, and how it's going to be... Where you're going to be able to, like, uh, sort everything, um, be able to... Oh, goodness gravy. There's something on my controller that I'm bumping that's changing the screen, so sorry about that. But we're already thinking about, like, how it's going to be displayed from your point and click abilities using a mouse and keyboard, specifically on PC, versus being on console and using how your console controller, which is going to be a little bit more restricted. So you're still able to, like, grab these items and you're able to, like, um, you're still able to equip... Um, and all of these different features, you're still able to compare, you're still able to do all of these different elements. Ex expand cargo. Oh, come on. Can we do it? Everything is weird. Okay, so we can expand cargo. Uh, for example, I'm going back to my mouse and keyboard because this is finicky. But like seeing here, when you expand the cargo, you just get all of your cargo very specifically. So you could see all the more spaces that you have. Um, this is far more significant when this is cut off, but we don't even have it cut off yet. But this would show you the everything, right? I mean, then obviously when you're going in here and you're comparing all your stats, like you, you can see in the background of some of these, it says Maverick. You can see the background of that one, it's Federal Arms and Crafts. Uh, federal arms and crafts oh my gosh Andy um, so you can like you can see like there's a lot more details to come attach the item widget instead of adding to the clutter at the bottom of the screen oh yes okay yeah okay so so you're specifically talking about like um, where did that weapon go Like the equip and dismantle, is that, is that what you're talking about, Michael? Cause like it's, cause now it's not just like hanging off the screen. I'm pretty sure that's what you're talking about. If it's not, I'm going to feel like a big doofus, but otherwise you can tell the point is that you can see a lot of work and a lot of care has been taken into consideration of all of this. Like heck, even, even with this item right here, right now, you can see in the upper right portion of it that it's now highlighted, uh, pink right you can see that pink highlighted color which shows you that this one is rare as opposed to superior of the other item so it gives you that quick clarification of the two items you're comparing how neat is that see even the blue goes into the gray now and then it goes into the the, the purple oh my gosh isn't that cool these are the little details oh my gosh all right cool thanks michael i appreciate it so we could we could dismantle this thing. Hopefully it's yeah okay. So it's gonna do this wonky thing with the screen. Don't worry about that. It's gonna be fixed. Okay. But we can we could dismantle. I think we can dismantle. Can we dismantle, please? Okay. So we dismantled it and it's gone. It, it was oh we got carbon powder. Excellent. So maybe what we can do now. Do we see the carbon powder? No, I don't see the carbon powder. Don't worry about it. I was gonna show you the stacking mechanics, but. You can tell that there's a lot of work being done just from item UI alone. Just item UI. Just how you're handling your goods out in the vastness of space. As well as being able to pull those sweet, sweet details in from your hangar. You can also probably tell that there's a new animation for entering your hangar. Especially those of you who have the prototype. Like, <clears throat> everything that you're seeing here. It's just, we're trying to get it more fluid and just make it make more sense so that you can get exactly where you need to go and plug it in and be on your way. Will crafting come back? It's likely dusty, dusky. We are looking at two different ways of how it will. So, um, yeah, I know it's, it's kind of a bit of a non-answer, but 
Um, so I'm not saying yes, but it's possible. It's pretty possible that crafting's coming back in some capacity. Uh, Daniel asks, being open world, will there be a chance of setting up a skirmish between players and devs as a world event? Rockfish Empire versus Unfederated Player Alliance. Okay, so I gotta burst your bubble here a little bit. You're probably gonna be a little bit sad, but know that we are very passionate about making a single player experience here that's open world in an RPG. It's a persistent world that you are constantly modifying and changing based on your specific interactions alone. Uh, we are a single player developing company and our community also really wants this to be a single player game. And that's what we are patrons for and about. So if you're looking for a multiplayer experience like this, sorry, this isn't it. I don't mean to break your heart. We might do multiplayer in the future, not of Everspace 2, it would have to be a new title. But uh, we, we very want, very much so want to lock down all of the balance, all of the enjoyment factors, everything as thoroughly as possible around that single player experience. Twitch isn't working for you, so you're gonna stick to YouTube? That's totally fine, Jackson. Happy to have you here. Happy, happy to have you here. Uh, love the flavor text and lore associated with items in tooltips. Is that something on the wish list for features? Caden, it is absolutely gonna be a thing. Um, I know that some of the um, some of the commodities already have some really silly um, details uh, that the team has plugged in. Um, I don't have one of the really funny ones, but the Apollox Energy Drink says, it's the energy injector for your body! Apollox, recharge your core! Stuff like that. Um, so yeah, we're, we're definitely making sure we have some fun with all of the, all of the details and, and the descriptions that will be coming in the future, especially with legendaries. You, you know, it's going to be fun to plug those in with legendaries. So, all right. So that's enough. I can show you out of the main build, but like I said, the next time we stream, and I'm not guaranteed sure when that's going to be, uh, it might, it's either going to be two weeks or three weeks from now. Cause if it lands on like a... A New Year's Eve, New Year's Day thing. Obviously, there won't be a stream. But um, the next time we do end up streaming, we're going to be talking about this UI. We're going to be talking about the UI uh, behind me that I'm blocking, um, as well as uh, like all of that stuff, because we are in the middle of remodeling it, if you will. Um, so also, I wanted to show just really quick what happens to the UI when you plug in a controller. You'll see that the left and the right uh, sides down here they actually changed into like this hexagonal format. And that is so that whenever you're holding your buttons down um, on the controller, it's much more accessible. You see how it's spreading in the lower left? And then it's also in the middle, it's showing you, now I just have to push left on the D-pad to enable my EMP generators. Nice and simple, so that's super clean. Why are my weapons firing but not making any noise? Don't worry about that. It's a work in progress. We're gonna fix all these kinks. Gonna pull out this controller now and going to kill this game as we transition into the prototype build that you guys also have. Maybe show off some secrets that you haven't found yet, yeah? Mm, that'll be kind of fun. So let's go ahead and do that transition right now. So I'll see you in just one moment. And we are back into the Aerospace 2 prototype build that has been distributed to our backers. If you have no idea what I'm talking about and you're like, what, I could have gotten this? You still can. There's not a lot of time left, but you can actually go to everspace.game slash store where you can purchase a version of the full game of Aerospace 2 when it releases, but be a part of the prototype, um, as well as if you would like the alpha, the beta and early access packages. So uh, definitely be checking that out if you are interested at all in the slightest and want to support the development. Uh, this is also a great way to not only put your money uh, towards us, but also to put your mouth where your money is as this gives you direct access as being a part of the development itself 
I want to stress this. I always stress this in every single stream, but <clears throat> it, it always kind of like pains me when people look at some sort of crowdfunding campaign as like a pre-order for a game. This is not a pre-order system. Yes, you can look at it like that. You can just throw your money at us and wait until the full game's done and you got it. Yes. But what this really is, is an opportunity for you to not only support us financially, but also in a capacity to engage with and help develop the title itself. You don't get that out of a pre-order. When you are an alpha tester, when you're diving into that alpha and you're playing the game, sure you can look at it as getting a sample of the game early, but it's also an experience that is invaluable to us because now all of your feedback, all of your experiences are now becoming something that changes the very nature of the game, okay? I'm putting a lot of emphasis here, but it's so important. I implore you, if you really want to be a part of the development process of Everspace 2, look at what your options are over on that store page. Again, it is everspace.game slash store. And if there's something that looks right to you, I, I strongly encourage you to dive into that and be a part of the development of this game. It is your feedback that transforms a good game into a fantastic one. We understand that through our process of Everspace 1. It's why we're taking this initiative and doing it with Everspace 2. All right. Whoo! Beautiful. Hey, welcome, Mad Dog. Sorry, I just rejoined. No problem. What planets are explorable? There are several planets. Um, oh, Michael said next dev stream is probably January 3rd. That sounds right. That sounds right. Probably January 3rd. And we, on January 3rd, we'll talk more about the UI changes for the ship itself. It's going to be lovely. All right. Any new systems to show off? Should we expect PvP? No PvP. It's a single player game. Recently found a plasma field inside of a black hole in Everspace. Is that common? Um, no, but that's awesome. Did you take a picture? Sai, did you have to stream the same time as Egosoft? So hard to choose what to watch. Why not both? The power of the internet. I mean, I totally understand you though. Um, it's good stuff. Will you add VR support? VR support is not likely, and I'll tell you why. It's something that could come in the future, but as of right now, we received a lot of criticism, a lot of feedback from our VR support from Everspace One. And what we learned is that when you go VR, you need to go full VR. You need to cover the full gambit for that community because if you come up short in any capacity with VR, you get completely crapped on. <laughs> and we wanna take great care in a VR aspect if we move in that direction. So, big if here, if we decide to move in a VR supported direction for Everspace 2, it will very likely be featured as a separate entity from the core Everspace 2 game itself. You'll have to buy a different version of the game as VR. What that'll do is give us our ability to have full attention on making every aspect of that VR the absolute best it can possibly be. Again, 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 that's a big if. We've learned a lot through our processes. And if we go in the VR direction, we want to make sure we can deliver that to you guys. So that is the response I've got for you. Whew. I did take a picture. Good. Put on the Discord after the stream. Excellent. That's fantastic. There should be four locations to explore, Mad Dog. All right, let's go ahead and dive into this. I have to hit new game. I have to hit new game. Ooh, that was close. All right. So, I know a lot of you out there have been really excited about the prototype. You've been diving into it. You've probably seen a lot of this already. I'm still going to be covering a little bit. Uh, I'm saying a little bit a lot. I'm gonna be covering a lot of the details just to start out of the gate so anybody who's new to this experience understands those core differences between Everspace 1, which we played earlier, and what we're bringing to the table in Everspace 2. Obviously, we started off the Everspace 2 segment talking a lot about the itemization itself, so you know it's quite different in regards to like the genre alone. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with the different games, Everspace 1 is a rogue light game or a roguelike elements game if you will um, and what that means is fast-paced arcade shooter that when you die through these procedurally generated environments you have to start over and try again <clears throat> here it's still an arcadey space shooter but we've dropped that roguelite formula and now we are in an open world rpg setting this means that your items and your interactions 
that you make are all very permanent and when you die instead of having to start all the way over again you'll usually start at some sort of checkpoint or maybe have to do a mission completely over um features like that where you're still going forward you're still making progress but the difficulties are definitely going to be more demanding depending on where you're going and what you're doing so as you can see here another big aspect of it is we are no longer using that procedural generation um, to facilitate where you're going in the world of everspace 2 since it is an open world rpg all of these locations all of these like little dots and stuff, these are handcrafted locations. And it's not like they're tiny little spaces where you go, ooh, I found a station, now I'm gonna go to the next dot. We're cultivating very massive uh, debris fields and uh, space hazards that you can bounce through and like unique uh, derelict stations that span a massive amount of space. and space cities in the sky and we're talking ground locations on planets that are hand crafted not a procedurally generated world but a very intentionally crafted space for you to navigate inside of a cave down on a planet and maybe engage with foes and all of these all of these spaces look very very different from ever space one which is just giving you random after random after random and making you think on the fly here you can very well learn the areas and explore them to know where things are at, what to do, and how to approach it. But granted, it's going to be a lot, so good luck in memorizing all of it. <laughs> but very, very intentionally handcrafted spaces, persistent spaces based on your actions. Whew! Lots of it. I did take a... Okay. VR for Everspace 1 was a bit oof. That's fair, that's fair feedback. Do it full or not at all. Thank you for saying that. That is exactly what we will be uh, attempting to do, probably. <laughs> Very much so. Oh, Darth, uh, Darth Trethon, welcome to the stream, says, VR is kind of terrible right now, regardless, so it's kind of whatever. I mean, I think there are some really, really good VR experiences out there. I don't know why I'm picking this up and having a conversation about it, because this is a stream for ever space too but my point is is that i think vr can be a really incredible experience and if we look into it for ever space too it's going to be there we go all right let's get into this so here we are uh flying out with a sentinel uh in fact this is the same hang on a second <clears throat> What I meant to say is that this is the same Sentinel from Everspace 1. Uh, similar, similar uh, Sentinel from Everspace 1 uh, that has been upgraded, as you can see. Uh, so if you are familiar with the Sentinel in Everspace 1, you'll see that the wings and the engine and the cockpit <clears throat> and maybe other parts of the body are quite different than the way they last were. And that is because we are no longer flying those same ships. Time has passed between Everspace 1 and Everspace 2, and you're going to have a lot of options to decide on what type of ship you're going to be navigating with in this new open world space. So the Sentinel is making its reappearance, however, in a different capacity. Same thing with the Interceptor. We have some similar looks and styles to it, but it's also very new, of course. And we also have entirely new ships, um, like the Assault Fighter here, that are going to be making their way into the experience of Everspace 2. Lots and lots and lots of ships. Lots and lots and lots. We've got certain classes and subclasses of each that's going to be your starting point of customization. But from there, <clears throat> you're going to get real crazy because as you saw me kind of flipping through out there, our ships use a modular system of connecting your cockpit and your wings and your engines. And obviously you can change the colors. But also the um, the body itself, like all of these things you can customize to your heart's content and create new ship, essentially. Uh, this one I'm, I'm mostly partial to, but everything I rotated around was just one class. It's just one, it's just the medium ship class. All of the, all of the combinations, like I, I weaved through 11 combinations here, I'll show them again. All of these are just variations of a single class, and there are multiple classes that will be in the full game that each have their own unique styles and wings and maybe even colors. I don't know. Probably not colors. Colors will probably be available at all. But, like, every ship is going to have its own distinct look and feel for how you're flying it out in the wild, and we want you to be able to have full control over that. So definitely be looking forward to those features. 
in the future. <clears throat> this is gonna be the game of your dreams. Whoa. Whoa. Let's 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 let let's That's intense. <laughs> Thank you for that compliment. We hope that it is everything that you hope and dream it to be as well. Um, there's a lot of work ahead of us, but as you could see from earlier in the stream, we are making good progress. All right, so let's go ahead and take this thing cruising for a bruising. A lot of people who have already dove into the prototype will say that the core gameplay um, already feels a little bit different from Everspace 1. It's supposed to. The maneuverability is meant to be fairly similar, um, but obviously it is a new game and there's going to be new ways to control yourself, new ways to engage foes, new tools, new experiences altogether. So it's definitely going to be a little bit of a growing pain, I suppose, between Everspace 1 and Everspace 2, but we are hopeful that most people who have played Everspace 1 are going to be able to pick up Everspace 2, dive right in, and feel right at home, even though it's a completely different genre. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just doing your traditional navigating around, blowing stuff up, but now we've got a couple new tools like picking up this fuel tank, for example. Let's see if we can hit the drone. Uh, I usually fail at this. Oh, it went it went down. Well, that was anticlimactic. But um, but you can you can grab things, you can throw them around uh, with this new grapple feature. Um, I'm probably we're probably just gonna let that one go. I don't want to accidentally blow myself up. But the way that you're interacting with objects now, it's a little bit different. For example, with this shipwreck. Um, instead of like just blasting it open like you would in Everspace 1, now you go up towards it and you search it and you take all its sweet, sweet, delicious loot, right? Oh, we also want to equip these new items. We'll talk about that in a second. But this grapple mechanic, um, one other thing about it is that you have other interactables like these barrel bombs that you can uh, take and chuck out of the way. Uh, so let's go ahead and do some, some extra damage to his armor break all of that and then we're gonna take one of these barrel bombs and just say goodbye beautiful you'll also be able to grab random debris in certain locations so say there's a derelict station that's similar to one that you've encountered in Everspace one now the way to get inside is completely blocked so you could pound it out by using a lot of missiles and a lot of energy from your weapons or you could just grapple the dang thing and throw it out of your way and just get right inside. There might be other things that you can engage with with your grapple, like these little drones for example. Maybe you need to upgrade it, but pesky little drone is nothing when you grab onto it and toss it into a nearby asteroid. Alright, so we're going to look into this little cave, destroy this turret, Excellent. Take these wiring kits, activate this drone, blow up these containers to take all the loot. Wonderful. And let's just let's just quickly jump into the next area. I see a planet over there. Let's go there. So this is the super light travel where we're actually moving in the solar system itself. I have full control over moving here, by the way. Uh, but we're going to go to this planet. If we didn't want to wait around, we could actually just fast travel to it. Wouldn't have to, no waiting whatsoever. But um, I just want to show you, like, you can tell that I'm moving because the rings are, are looking a little bit different. We're getting real close to that planet, right? Oh, uh, you can see that moon over there. All right, let's go to this location. Perfect. So you see the planet was behind us whenever we warped in. It's all still there. We're going straight over to the station where we're going to get a little job. We're going to do for a guy who needs some help. <clears throat> what are you guys talking about? <coughs> talking about? <coughs> In the prototype, I almost killed myself because I grabbed a large debris piece that was pulled too close. Yep, that can happen. Don't worry, we'll get that fixed. Given the fast-paced nature, I think a lot of people will rebind so they don't have to move their left hand to reach the 5 to 9 keys. 
probably, and we're still looking for different ways to uh, keybind as well. What's the purpose of the crack behind the main base? The various cracks that you see in, in asteroids around these handcrafted areas are all for your exploring rewarding features, right? So if you take the time to navigate around the game space and you find something like that, it's sweet, sweet loot that you earn. And some of those sites in these handcrafted locations, because they are handcrafted, are going to have specific equipment that you can find as well. So maybe there's a very legendary pulsar, uh, pulse laser thing, right? And you can only find it near in a literal pulsar uh, uh, star. And it's hidden away in like a chunk of asteroid really close to like the, I don't know, whatever. Like the point is that there's, there's specific gear that you'll also be able to find in specific locations. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and repair all so that we're not almost dead anymore. Refill this missile. And then let's see, are there anything that we want to upgrade? We don't really have a lot of monies yet, so we're just gonna sell a bunch of stuff. It's fine, perfect. We did get a little mission uh, this guy asked us to do, but I wanna just go blow stuff up, so one second. Stay in your lane when going faster than light. I know, right? So let's just briefly talk about some of the larger vessels you encounter. This one's, this guy's a little bigger. Um, completely new to the Everspace franchise as a whole. And we have a lot of GMB taking him out too. His armor was taken down, so you'll actually see these coils in the interior. They've opened up. We could shoot those for some really large damage. There's going to be a lot of weak points and interactables on the larger the ship gets. Maybe even somewhere you can fly inside of, depending on how you're dealing with the situation. So we're gonna just blast him away in the interior right here. You'll see his health just dwindles. Boom, he's gone. So capitalize on the situations at hand and you will be rewarded. Perfect. All right, so we're gonna fly over here. We're gonna cut, get a couple secrety things. First one is this site right here, where we can grab some more thrusters and a, <clears throat> I think it's a, re uh, no, it's a superior homing missile launcher. It's just better missiles. So we're absolutely replacing that. And thrusters are just better. And our weapon damage actually increases when we're standing still with these. So if we stop completely, you'll see that we get overdrive. So. Our weapons are just going to do more damage, provided we don't move. Cool little features like that. Lots of different item modifiers and whatnot are going to be making their way into the core Everspace 2 experience. So it'll be good. That explosion needs to be at least three times bigger. You know, I don't necessarily disagree with you. I can tell you that we're working on our explosions. Borderlands Diablo in space? Great! Excellent. That's actually what we're shooting for. It's kind of a mix between the two of Diablo and Borderlands, but then in space. So yeah, very good. Glad you noticed. Kudos for getting the distances right. It's awesome to switch from one light year to a bit more than 300,000 uh, kilometers. Hey, yeah, I know, right? Feels good. Jackson, I understand that planetary surfaces are limited to how far you can go. So what happens if you go out of bounds? In traditional Star Fox faction in all range mode, your ship will flip back around and cruise right back into the game space. Instead of just you know, slowly dying like we did in Ever Space 1. Sorry about that. <laughs> we learned, we've improved. Cheers. <laughs> All right. Oh my gosh, Caden, you silly man over on Twitch. All right. So another thing that I wanted to show, and a lot of people have figured this one out already, um, is there's also a destructible asteroid over here. Um, I actually haven't showed this on screen because I wanted to peep I wanted to see people figure it out and you did you did so swimmingly so basically there's a bunch of these little detonators on this asteroid and if you cruise around and you activate all of them in time um, I've only done this like once by the way so if I fail feel free to laugh oh yes excellent failure one more perfect so we just fly around activate those detonators and we say 
See you later, Space Tater. And we get all this loot, which is basically a uh, wonderful, wonderful construction work rock. Excellent. Now I'm wondering if if uh, I can use. I'm trying to figure out if I can show you a way that the uh, the. No, nothing's long enough, so I have to I have to show that again later. But basically, the the AI or the UI has changed significantly, so that stuff doesn't get overlapped and and cut off the screen anymore. All right, so another one I want to show is this broken drone. I have shown this on screen, but I think it's still important to know. Ooh, a coin makes a 180. Absolutely, 100% talent 24. So this broken drone is a nice little one to follow because there's this elegant debris field that's fun to navigate. So this guy, his armor is real heavy. So in order to do damage to armor, let's very briefly take a time out and we are going to talk about the difference between kinetic and energy DPS. We had a really long time discussing this in a previous stream, but it's really important to know the difference between Everspace 1 and how Everspace 2 handles this. So let's briefly talk about Everspace 1 first. In Everspace 1, you had your uh, shield DPS and your hull DPS, and that was it, okay? So one could translate shield DPS as energy damage and hull DPS as kinetic damage. However, this is incorrect. Shield DPS literally is how much damage is dealt to the shield, and hull DPS is literally how much damage is being dealt to the hull. Here, energy and kinetic aren't respective of shields and hull, but rather shields and armor. So energy is how much damage is dealt to the shield. All kinetic damage of the weapon is absorbed by the shield does no damage in the opposite capacity the armor receives full kinetic damage from the weapon but absorbs all of the energy the hull of your shield or of your ship when you don't have any more shields at all and you don't have any more armor at hull the hull receives both energy and kinetic damage fully so when your shields are down and you don't have any armor left your hull is going to take a tremendous amount of damage from any sort of output. So be very, 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 very mindful about <clears throat> your armor and your shield situation. At the same time, you also want to be very mindful about the damage that your weapons are doing. In the case of this drone that we are fighting right here, had we been using our pulse laser, we'd be doing 15 damage to them per second. That's it. That's nothing. Whereas with our autocannon, we are doing 54 damage per second because it's all armor. And our kinetic damage is going to be dealing out the most damage to armor. So we are going to continue doing that with our autocannon. Cranking this bad boy down as we're weaving through this uh, debris field. I don't want to accidentally kill him off because I want him to get to his destination. But you can see that there's even more damage being done to him now that his armor's gone because it's receiving the full damage of both the kinetic and... Ooh. Both the kinetic and energy DPS. I got distracted by a shiny. I was, somebody's going to point that out. I was like, ooh. But, um, but yeah, it's very intentionally designed that way. So now we're going to just destroy them here. And we got all these drones popping out. Now these drones don't have any shields or armor. So we can really blast them with whatever. We can blast them with pulse lasers. We can blast them with uh, auto cannons. It's really at this point what has the most damage overall. Which is technically, I believe, the pulse laser. It has 95 DPS max because you combine the two. Versus the auto cannon, which is a mere 70 two so 95 versus 72 damage total if you combine them both Woo! pick up this scatter gun oh i like scatter guns beautiful scatter gun is your shotgun in space it's one of my favorite weapons it's so satisfying to use 
Excellent. We also have one other item here. Marksman's scatter gun. Let's compare real quick. <clears throat> it's actually better. Wow. Oh, it's level three. Alright, we'll use that instead. Perfect! So let's fly back to the station and maybe do his mission. I don't know. It's good. How have you all been receiving the prototype, by the way? I've heard some of you complaining a little bit about the controls because it's different than Outer Space 1. And that's fine. I'm not saying, like, you're whining. I'm saying that it's, it's good to see that you're already in the mood to give feedback. I love that. Oh, we're stopped, so we have a, a weapon damage bonus. That's funny. Will there be enemies that are as fast or maybe faster than your boost speed? I would love to have super fast chase sequences. Jackson, this is a very, very likely thing to occur in Everspace 2. There are going to be enemy types that are going to be able to loop around you with how much speed they have until you upgrade, of course. Um, and there's also going to be enemy types that you can freely circle around as well. Um, Lots of small enemies, and not just drones, but also one-man fighters that are even smaller than this vessel we're flying here. And also much larger capital ships and destroyers and, and uh, uh, everything in between. So, a lot of different ways that you're going to be challenged. How do the levels work? This is a great question. So let's talk a little bit about the progression systems because I want to. And the question was asked, so it makes sense. Yay! Awesome. So progression. Basically, um, the way that you are going to be navigating progression as a whole is through three different capacities. The first capacity is through leveling up. When you level up, that is going to give you uh, additional stat increases, just kind of like your generic sort of, hey, you're boosted up. Awesome. A little bit more survivability here, a little bit more options there. But it's going to open up new perks that your pilot will be able to choose. And you'll be able to go back and change those. So if you choose one perk and you're like, this sucks, you can go back and change it at that particular level. And each one of those is going to um, maybe give you a new, unique play style, a different approach to how you navigate the game space. Um, then there's also the customization of your ship itself. This is going to be leveled up through those new unique items that you find out in space. Some of those are going to be as simple as cosmetic, like they could be wings, it could be a new uh, cockpit design, it could be a new engine, uh, just to make the engine thrusters look different. So like if you see here on this particular ship and how it's boosting, if we change this ship around to this one, the boosting's different. Like the boosting is actually different on like each of these engines. Like it's, they're not just in the same spot, like, they're completely different. So you're gonna be able to customize a lot of this and how your engines are, are are looking, your wings, obviously. That's the second thing that you're gonna be customizing. I'm glad that we got to the border because this shows you how things are flipped around. You get right back into it. I actually, I really like the circle engine. I really like that look. <clears throat> but there, like you can see like just the the visual difference uh, of customization and leveling up and finding new items is going to be. And then finally, the very the very last thing um, pertaining to all of the leveling up and galore is going to be right out of the gate, your items. Your items themselves, so your pilot leveling up perks, your ship leveling up new abilities and traits and visual aesthetics, and then third, your items themselves. Each of your items <coughs> actually has a level associated with it. So for example, this pulse laser, it's level two. Now in the prototype, that doesn't really mean much. It just means I do more damage than the level one version. But in the full game, higher levels are going to have uh, not just like different types of modifiers and do more damage, but they could also um, they could also be the amalgamation of lower leveled items that you combine. Because crafting is something that we're looking at and we know that when you find something and get it replaced, that you just basically lose the old thing. It's beca It becomes worthless. What would happen, for example, if you're running around in space and you're level 20 and you find a level 11 item? Does that mean you just leave it in space? It's worthless? Does that mean you pick it up and sell it for like five credits? Like, do you want, we want you to go into hoarder mode? I don't want you to go into hoarder mode. Or maybe what happens to that, that weapon 
that is a level 5 pulse laser that you're just absolutely in love with, but it's not nearly as good as your level 10 Gatling, uh, uh, level 10 beam laser that you find. Just statistically, it's worse, but you just like the old one. We would want to give you the ability to level up that weapon as well through some means. And we'll have more information about those means in the future. Uh, but right now, just know that there's lots of different ways that you're leveling all together, customizing your experience and making this your own. Layers upon layers upon layers. It's a big, meaty, moist Everspace 2 cake. I shouldn't have said moist. That is such a gross word. But you get the picture. You get the picture. Flat gun. Ah, oh, wonderful. Excellent. Could you manually fly to different planet systems without using your hyperdrive? Uh, so yes and no, Jackson. So we can actually, we can do, we can do manual cruising and, and like going anywhere and everywhere, everywhere else we want. But in order to actually enter the location, you do have to target it and actively say, I want to go here. So like if I just cruise straight at this site, for example, I go through it. The only way to actually go to the site is by choosing it and pressing F, and then we go. But otherwise, you do have completely free navigation flying around within the super light travel. This is a good question. Space train confirmed for Everspace 2. Oh my gosh. There are kind of space trains like this uh, freighter here. They're basically space trains. Can you make a garbage pizza out of the items you're not using? This game is already a better cook than me. Oh my gosh, sauce. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is silly. I love it. First time checking this game out. Full HOTAS support. Right now, the prototype, absolutely not. But the full game, whenever it's fully developed, absolutely will have HOTAS support. It's something we did with Everspace 1, and we're planning on doing it even better in Everspace 2. So yes. You may want to trigger an auto jump into location when you try and fly through it. Eh, maybe. What do you guys think? Is that what you wanted to do? Sometimes you're flying around and you don't necessarily want to go into a site and you want to just do your own thing. We kind of, the way that we thought about it is that we wanted to have it to where like, you don't fly into a site unless you specifically tell it to fly into the site. But I mean, there's a lot of time to do crazy new stuff, obviously. Will it support dual sticks? Mm. Oh, there is experimental HOTA support in the prototype. My apologies, Michael. Oh my goodness. I actually didn't know that. Did not know that there was experimental HOTA support in the prototype. So if you do have HOTA and you do have the prototype, by all means, have a go. Thank you for that correction, Michael. You are a rock star. You're also my boss. I'm not brown nosing. All right. If you don't know, you can add a checkbox in an options menu to turn that feature on. Oh yeah, we, we're gonna have a lot of toggles to where you can adjust and modify features to your liking. One of which is actually um, like the numbers coming up. Uh, so like whenever you're fighting, you know, your outlaws and your GMBs or whatever, and you see like the numbers pop up, uh, I'm too far away. So like these numbers that are popping up right there, if you don't like those and you wanna turn them off, you can. You like the, the experience you see pop up, if you don't want to see that, turn it off. If you want to see more, you want to see like every little damage, if you want to see all your critical hits capitalized in full thing and have it say, good job, you're welcome, here's a pat on the back, go grab yourself a beer, we're probably not going to have a toggle for that. But you're going to be able to modify those different traits and abilities uh, in the full game especially so that you're getting the uh, feedback that you desire. Some people don't like it, some people love it. So why not have the option? An obvious prompt would be good, yeah, I agree. Boom! Oh, we missed. Ouch, he got us with the uh, minefields. Rip headphone users, by the way. Whenever a madcap is destroyed, they drop a minefield in their wake. So that's why we got a bit of damage on our armor. <clears throat> so we're gonna need to go repair ourselves. We're going to take out this one more madcap before we do so. Boom! 
Boom! Oh, beam laser. Let's just show that off real quick, because it's fun. That's a, this is a weak looking beam laser. But beam lasers have returned for sure. Most of the equipment from Everspace 1 will be receiving a return, so if you were like madly in love with something out of Everspace 1, you're probably gonna find that item again. In some capacity or degree, for sure. For sure. Maybe it would make sense only for things like an asteroid you're gonna collide with. Maybe. Unidentified signal in open space, and there would be no need for the game to take control from the player and drop hyperdrive. This is true. We might be able to make a toggle. I, I mean, like I'm seeing what you guys are saying, and I can see how some people would just want that to be automatic. Um, another option is that we could have it to where when you fly in close and you're not locked on, it could then just bring up a prompt to say, would you like to enter the area? That might be a nice compromise. But th the point overall, what I'm saying, is that we still have flexibility and room to change things around in that capacity. It's not something that we have to decide on right now. It's not something we're going to decide on tomorrow. It's not going to be something that's like, it's not like we're going to be hardheads and say, oh no, it's done. You can't touch it. Like, it can be a point of conversation. And if you're passionate about how it should be, I implore you to dive into the forums, join the Discord, and have a conversation there where those, those ideas are lasting and it's a group process where we're all coming together and figuring out what can be best for the game space. Awesome. Wonderful. I love it. The scattergun is love. Oh my gosh, Dusty, I love you. Dusty Dolphin, 100%. Love it. Does the leveling work any kind of power level way? A la Destiny, where damage arbitrarily drops off if the gear isn't an appropriate level, or is it a more simulationist damage is kind of thing so i would say that in the examples that you gave it's more of a simulationist uh, damages damage kind of thing however there are a lot of different ways that we are looking to um change up the formula especially when you're at the highest possible level um because obviously if you're at the highest possible level how are you going to get any better or do any new things and a lot of that's going to be through how you've created your builds and so you have to explore other options and synergies in order to capitalize on the way you engage with the game and to that it's more of a destiny styled uh, experience so i guess to answer your question it's a bit of both um but the general progression forward right out of the gate is more of the, the uh, of the latter as opposed to the prior have you seen the new star wars movie if though if so thoughts so i have not seen the star wars movie had I, I probably wouldn't share too much because I, I wouldn't want to spoil things for people. Um, I do have a lot of friends and family who are already starting to see it. And <clears throat> from the... <clears throat> it's, not really, it's not really something we should even be talking on stream. But to make it brief, I am very passionate about strong storytelling and uh, character progressions and, um, and, and so much more in in the realm of bringing everything together as a whole, as opposed to just having really beautiful CGI and sound design on a big screen. Um, not that I can't appreciate uh, the beautiful CGI and sound design if there was, say, a bad story being told, but um, I digress. So I have not seen the new Star Wars movie, and probably won't, um, if, I'm being, if I'm being honest. So... But you never know what can happen. Maybe one of my friends will have it and I'll watch it with them or something. But I'm not really interested. So, there you go. I'm sure it's pretty eye candy, though. In the meantime, we're fixing some leaks. Mm. Can I show the unknown signal thingy? Yeah, probably. Let me uh, repair this last thing. Get some, get some goods from this dude. Oh my gosh, Kate. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to wait for this guy to give us our money. And we're going to repair up. And then we're going to fly out and we're going to look at one of those unknown signals. Just to show you a quick example of that. Uh, there's a little bit of randomization as well. So it could be fun to see what we find. Excellent. Uh, so let's head straight to the star. <clears throat> see what we find. So we're just gonna we're just gonna go into straight cruise mode. Let's do. Yeah, Jackson, I've been getting those vibes as well. But you know, I 
and I'm not knocking people like if if you go see Star Wars and you enjoy it awesome that's great if you if you saw Star Wars and you didn't enjoy it awesome you know what you like like there's there's no problems either way that's the beauty of it all it's great it's so great like it's subjective uh you know to like enjoyment things like even with our game like if people are diving in the prototype and like man it's so garbage i can't stand it i wish everything would change awesome at least tell us why so that we can help it fix because we're in development unlike a movie that came out that you can't change but like like we could we have that ability so please give us your feedback tell us why you absolutely despise the inner workings of what we're doing and and we can probably uh do things to to address it beautiful gorgia bdx i hope i pronounced your name right welcome to the stream where we had just an aside about some movie it's good prepare for interception no i want an unknown signal but we'll just follow this really quick Interceptions are just one of those things that gives you something to do in the midst of fast travel. Um, it can be annoying at times if you're really trying to get from point A to point B. Know that these only come up when certain events are going on. So, for example, if there's absolutely nothing going on in your main storyline, you're not going to get intercepted because nobody cares about you. But if there are certain things that are going on, for example, if somebody is trying to track you down and kill you, I don't know, then you're probably going to run into a lot more interceptions. And you want to avoid them because when you are engaged in interceptions, the battles are going to be tough and brutal. It's not going to be as easy as it is in the prototype where it's basically like, oh, you have to fight a drone. No, no, no. No, interceptions are not things you want. Unknown signals, however, those can be very alluring because of the new uh, locations and, and uh, uh, events that can occur there. The prototype is so great. Hey! Thank you for the feedback. We are glad that you are enjoying it. Wonderful. All right, I wanna, oh, I wanna see if I can get, I know it's, we're not getting one at all. Come on, give, give it to me, game. I see an unknown location over there, but I need an unknown signal. So while we're doing this, I'm gonna keep reading the chat. Any questions? Oh, there's one. Ha ha! So we're gonna flip over into an awkward roll. Get on into this unknown signal. Oh my gosh, Caden. You know, it's really funny that you say that, is that, like, an Everspace movie could actually be pretty legit based on the storyline of Everspace 1, especially how we're moving into Everspace 2. So, alright, with unknown signals, you can see that everything is still in its proper place. The stars behind us, the planets are all there. They're actually living and breathing out there in space. Except now we have this base. We got these dudes we gotta fight. An outlaw scout. Ooh. Oh man, we'll just melt him away with our beam laser because it's a very consistent form of damage to both um, shields and armor. Granted, it uses a little bit more energy than usual. Shotgun in space! Get wrecked, sir! Wonderful. Oh, since we were talking about... Um, like auto triggering events that you're nearby um something i do want to address is that whenever you're like when you run into items that are out floating in space you will auto pick those up so you can't just you can't just let those be those will actually get scooped up into your ship we also want to take out this armor drone because oops that's not an armor drone but the armor drone is actually giving all of the nearby enemies that really thick armor to have to deal with and if we take out the armor drone, then all that goes away. But he's a little bit more evasive, as you can see. Let's just give him some missiles. Where did another missile go? Goodness, gravy. There we go. Is there another armor drone nearby? Oh my gosh. Yeah, there's another armor drone over there. Oh my gosh. At least I think. Maybe I'm wrong. Alright. But yeah, these layers of shields, then armor, then hull, this is where your item changing and, and strategizing are really going to come into play in Everspace 2. Um, beam laser, though, you don't have to worry about because it's just consistent damage all the way across the board. Look at that! Beautiful melting power. 
All right. I would totally buy into an Everspace series where you have arcs on different items. Oh my gosh, that sounds amazing. That actually sounds amazing. Wow, Solus, I'm sold. Where do I sign? Oh my gosh, that would be amazing. That would seriously be so cool. And Kaden, yes, um, we actually took inspiration from that movie that you're talking about. Any plans for electromagnet drones to make your kinetic weapons miss or electro electronic warfare drones to scramble the HUD? Yeah, we're definitely looking into different situations like that. We want to be careful with taking away visibility from the player. Um, some of the feedback we got from Everspace One was having these Okar scanning drones that would essentially be, uh, they would essentially like remove your ability to target opponents. And while from a gameplay standpoint, that definitely adds a challenge aspects to the game it doesn't necessarily feel like a, a fun challenge to overcome it just feels like a, a frustration something that's kind of annoying the player as opposed to something that's like engaging that you have to like figure out a way to deal with right so we are taking great care in, in that sort of process moving forward but there will absolutely be stuff like that All right, let's blow this thing up because that gives a power boost to everything nearby. Now, where is this armor drone? Oh my gosh! It's given everything armor, and it's really kind of annoying. We'll take out these turrets. Oh, that's a that's a barrel bomb. Get back in your face. Good riddance. All right, one more turret. Oh, is there... There's some loot inside? Yeah? Okay. Oops, did not mean to grab that. Oh, what the heck? We'll take this gas tank for kicks and giggles. Another outlaw drone. I don't know where the armor was being established from. Hmm. Maybe it's from this thing? Boom! That's, that's not a thing, by the way. This is just a... Uh, we're trying to destroy it anyway. Watch the explosion. Excellent. Yeah, I'm nothing. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not sure why they were still getting armor there. Might have been a, a glitch, or maybe it was... Uh, it might have also been um, a challenge where the armor was established from the base until all the base components were destroyed. Because I know that we are making lasting base effects like that, where you have to assault a base, for example, and once you destroy everything, then you get all the rewards back. But that one was kind of a pathetic little one. So, maybe not. I'm not sure. I'm not sure is the response. Also, I just realized I am eight minutes over the traditional stream time. I was not watching the time at all. Oh my gosh. Goodness gravy, guys. Nobody said a word. The stream is over. Oh my goodness. I should have been watching the time. That's on me. So, hey, because it's on me, I want to give you guys the space to ask one last question if you would like, and we will be delighted to help respond. Um, we did cover a little bit of new stuff today with how items are now newly displayed in Everspace 2. Quite the treat. Some really cool little quality of life stuff so that you can see all the details. Beautiful. There might be an armored drone bug in the prototype, but I'm sure that was armor base. Okay, excellent. <laughs> excellent. All right, Bloodstar, I'm waiting. What is your question? Anybody over on YouTube have a last minute question about the prototype? Because we are over time by about 10 minutes now. Lol Hype had a video you were going to show. Oh my gosh, you're right. Oh my goodness. Oh wow, you're right. Okay, so we need to, actually wait, wait. We need to, we need to do a thing first. So you're right, you're totally right. Um, LL Hype, if you are in the channel, I totally need to do this. So one thing that I love to do uh, for you beautiful people out there is highlight our community's fantastic work. Um, oh my goodness, I cannot believe I, I missed that. Um, so let me find it. So wait, okay. Our community does some really cool stuff. It's always awesome, it's always fun. And LOL Hype 
Um, he's he's an outstanding member of our community who's been having a blast. Uh, he, if you guys are not familiar with him, definitely go check out the gallery and find some of his Everscapes videos where he basically recorded 4K 60 frames per second uh, video footage within Everspace and just... It's, it's gorgeous. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, so this is his first look. It's our first look. It's your first look at his Everspace 2 videos that he's putting together. I'm getting my ear holes back full of joy and wonder as we watch this bad boy together. Are you ready? I'm excited. You should be excited. Here we go. Tease! Ah, oh, a little hype. He's learning from me. I'm sorry about that, guys. Knows how to tease well. But yeah, he's going to be doing a lot more of this type of stuff. Not only through the prototype, but I'm sure through the alpha, the beta, and the early access as well. I am really looking forward to seeing more of what he does. And hey, if you put together your own videos, or even maybe your little art style projects, maybe you make a clay interceptor from Everspace, by all means, take a picture, put it on our Discord. We would love to show that stuff in our live streams, and we'll talk about you, give you some updates and highlights and all those things, uh, point people in your direction. Um, for example, for LOL Hype, um, he doesn't really actually seek a lot of uh, uh, stuff from you guys, really. He just likes doing this, but I encourage you to go find his YouTube channel. Uh, subscribe to him. I encourage you to uh, check out other works that he's done. Uh, he's really good at video editing. Obviously, I don't have to say that. You've seen his work right here. Um, it's it's a good stuff. It's a good, it's a good time. And uh, so definitely bring us your love of the game and all the different capacities that you choose to do it in, and we will give you a shout out as well. All right. I'm going to answer like basically one more thing, and then I'm out of here. Um, let's see. Just when can we have access to the prototype? I wasn't on Discord. I may have missed the answer. Basically, the prototype has been distributed. If you are a Kickstarter supporter, it was it was sent to your email inbox. Uh, check your promotions folder. Also check and make sure it didn't go into your spam folders. Um, if you have only just bought the game through the online store, um, I think it's just a matter of waiting for the key to be delivered straight to your email after purchasing, um, if you got the respective uh, tier. Aside from that, if you do have any issues whatsoever, you can always email us 
at info at rockfishgames.com and say, hey, I was a backer. I got this particular tier. Here's my receipt. Could I get my prototype key? And we would be happy to send it to you in that capacity as well. Guys, I am way over my normal time of streaming. I have to bid you all adieu. So you have been awesome. I have been Eric Schrader, the community ambassador for Rockfish Games, serving you. Don't stop being awesome. And I will catch you in the next stream, which will be January 3rd, where we'll be talking about new UI reskinned completely for your playing needs in Everspace 2. Don't miss it. It's going to be awesome. All right. Toodles.